Darwin was a larger-than-life figure. She first rose to prominence in the 1930s and the 1940s. So by the time the other women who I write about in this book, Mary McCabe, Nina Simone, Abby Lincoln, Diane Carroll, and Cecily Tyson were coming of age professionally and politically in the late 1950s. Lena Horne had already been famous for, for years. She was known for her firsts, for integrating big band music, for getting a contract in Hollywood. Glamour was the word that everyone always used to describe the beautiful Lena Horne. This is the legacy that younger women performers encountered, and Lena Horne again cast a very um, big shadow for that younger generation. For some of them, that meant that she had opened doors that they were then able to go through. Diane Carroll built on and extended the traditions that um, Lena Horne had pioneered by performing on Broadway, recording albums, parts in films. In all of these venues, Diane Carroll, too, is known for um, being very attractive, for her fancy wardrobe, and for her talent, and her poise, and her voice. So in all of these ways, again, she extended and built on the traditions that Lena Horne had built. For many other younger black women performers that I write about, Lena Horne, both directly and indirectly, became a model of what they did not want to be, um, and was an example of all that they were trying to avoid in their efforts to remake meanings of black womanhood, and their efforts to challenge meanings of beauty and glamour that they felt were associated with whiteness and with white women. And Abby Lincoln is a great example of this. Abby Lincoln got her start as a singer, as a nightclub singer, too, in the 1950s, very much in the mold that Lena Horton had been in, wearing the tight dresses, the plunging necklines, appearing in nightclubs before mainly white audiences. In the late 1950s, Abby Lincoln decided she didn't want any of that. She changed her appearance, she changed her performance style, she changed her relationship to the music industry. She started to sing um, much more experimental jazz vocals. She said she wouldn't wear those plunging tight dresses anymore. She started wearing her hair natural in an afro. And she said, I demand to be taken seriously as a jazz artist and as a black woman. And for her, changing her appearance and changing her performance went hand in hand.